Hey Vinyl Community, Jeff here again, and I got some pre-orders in, and I wanted to show these. They're um, really kind of excited about this because I've been waiting for these for a while. So these uh, pre-orders, I actually placed this order. They weren't pre-orders at the time. Some of them were, and I'm rambling now. I um, There's a place that I go to for most of my imports. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of them, Miami Metal Merchant. They're a Florida-based distro and they are the ones that I find tend to have the best prices when it comes to things like High Roller Records or um, some of just a lot of those overseas services. When it comes to getting those over here, the price it you know tends to even beat you know Amazon. And so I order stuff from them now. The only slight I don't want to say it's a downfall is it takes time. They tend to order them. They don't always have everything in stock, but they tend to order them directly from overseas and it takes a while to get to you. So these actually were pre-ordered back in like November. So, and two or three of them came in immediately, but they sit there until the next one comes in. Uh, but anyway, so they have finally come in and I'm pleased. I mean, you know, I'm not impatient, so it's not a big deal. What I did is I was shooting to get the new Tokyo Blade I've mentioned Tokyo Blade before because they've been active again. They're an 80s band that went on into the late 80s and then kind of disappeared, then popped up here in the 90s and then popped up here, you know, here and there. Different members have popped up. But then around, was it 2018-ish, I think, they got back together and they've released a couple albums and I've shown those in the past. This is their most recent 2022 album called Fury. I've always enjoyed these guys. I discovered them around 83 when their first album came out. And have loved them ever since. And so when they started releasing new albums, I've been trying to pick them up and keep up with them. And then High Roller Records started reissuing some of their stuff, which is also what we've got here. But then on this particular, it's a double record set, red with the yellow splatter. They've got, if you're not familiar with them, you know, they're typical metal of the 80s. Kind of a, they've always been labeled a new wave, a British heavy metal type band. They are from the UK. Uh, and they And they had some decent popularity back then. And this is the original lineup for the most part, the original singer, I should say. They've had two main singers during the time when it was officially Tokyo Blade. <laughs> and then there have been other albums under the moniker of Tokyo Blade with uh, various other members, singers and stuff. But anyway, to me, this is a return to form because the first album, Alan Marsh, vocalist, this, that's kind of where I cut my teeth. And that's what I've always enjoyed. And so, you know, having him back and, and with the rest of the guys is here. Now, I will say, sadly, I listened to this album today. And as with can be the case sometimes with color records, it's it's not the greatest pressing. Surface noise is a, a little there for sure. And overall, the album just kind of sounds not real clear. Kind of got a fuzziness to it. Could be a dirty needle, but I don't know. I've been playing records most of the day. And this one, I noticed it more than usual. But... You know, I not I just don't know. I guess it's not the greatest pressing of this album, sadly. So anyway, it is what it is. So this is what I mainly went after. And then I thought, you know, while I'm at it, I need to pick up some of the High Roller Record reissues. And so I got Night of the Blade the night before. Now, there are two versions. One's called the Night of the Blade. One's called the Night of the Blade the night before. And I have, I was pulling here. I have an OG copy of Night of the Blade, so I didn't buy the reissue of that, though I'm pretty sure I will, just because of the upgraded, you know, the remastering and packaging, but but I don't know yet. It's not high on the list because I've already got an OG copy that's done pretty good. So if you don't know the story behind this, basically the band went in, they recorded this album, Night of the Blade, and there was uh, some kind of a disagreement, or I had heard originally that the label told the band they got to get rid of the singer. I've also heard that the singer quit because of a disagreement with the label. But what they did then, so they had already recorded the album Night of the Blade with Alan Marsh on vocals. That's what this is, the night before, because basically the next day they bring in a new singer and record the album again. And that's the one that's commercially available. And so this is a new singer to the band. Doesn't sound drastically different, still has a good sound to it. But anyway... This was the actual release, and in 1997, this version surfaced on CD, and now it's on vinyl. It is the Alan Marsh recording version of this, 
And um, so it's, you know, I was thrilled to have this edition. I had the CD back when it came out in 97 because I thought that was so cool. And as with most high roller record stuff, they are just, it's a great printing. This is actually the second time this one's been printed because there's a version with the red labels. And so that we came out in 21 and this is the 2022. And as with most of them, and as mentioned in my video yesterday, this one does come with high roller records tends to come with the posters and stuff and all of that. So it's got the original line up there. So that's the difference with this one and the one that you will find commercially available is this is this other version is going to have the new singer at the time. And then with that new singer, they did record a third album, which is one of the only ones I don't have on vinyl that is available on vinyl that is officially Tokyo Blade. But um, I will get it eventually. The other one was the reissue of their first album, just called Tokyo Blood. This is where, sort of kind of where I cut my teeth in 1983, and I'll explain that in a second. But again, High Roller Records, uh, great reissue. It's got a poster. I won't pull all that out. Poster the cover. It's got the insert. Even comes with a 8x10 promo shot of the band. And it is, I believe, all of these were on just black. Black. And so... This is the first album, and this really only was a import, a UK edition of the album, because when it came out in America, when I bought it, same cover, but it's called Midnight Rendezvous. Now, Midnight Rendezvous was a four-song EP that the band released after the first album. From what I can tell, they were all recorded pretty much in early 83, around the same time. Those four songs either were recorded at a different time, but they didn't make it on the album. So this album is what it is. And then what they did is they took the Midnight Rendezvous four songs and they added four songs from the first album. Or whatever you want to call it. Four songs from the first album, they, they added Midnight Rendezvous four songs. But what you've got here is essentially four songs of an EP and four songs from the first album. So you're missing the four songs from there. So this is what I grew up with. This is the only one that I knew existed. And so I had these eight songs from this album. And this is an OG copy that I had on Combat Records. And like I say, then they, I had bought the CD. It's been reissued also in 97 that had all the songs from both versions and the different uh, EPs at the time. Um, so yeah, so I'm glad to have this one on vinyl because I really the only one I ever had that was similar to that would have been this. So I picked up those. That was the main thing that I went after were the catching up with the three Tokyo Blade. They also had this, and I've seen this online, and it's a fair, it's a new repressing, a uh, new issue, but, uh, you know, price-wise, it was great. Kill After Kill by Exciter. I think this now makes to where I've only got two albums by Exciter that are available on vinyl that I don't have. The self-titled one that was a different singer that came out before this, well, the drummer just stopped singing, they had a different singer. Um, and then there is one of the latter years ones uh, when they change singers and change direction and everything. I, I have three out of four of those late year ones. This is the last album with Dan Beeler. I believe from what I hear, he is back. They've been doing stuff together. I'm hoping they'll be doing some more recordings. But this was a reissue that came out recently. So I wanted to grab this. And again, they had it. And it was a great price. So I threw it in with my order. It's on silver. Got the insert. So... I definitely wanted to add that to my collection. So that was the main order, were the three Tokyo Blade and the Exciter. Now, two of the Tokyo Blade and the Exciter had come in probably more than a month or so ago, but were being held up until Fury came out, which just came in. Then recently, like about two weeks ago, I placed an order for some other pre-orders, knowing that it was going to be at least till May before those came out. But one of them came right in. The other one, the other three are on hold. And so I wrote the guy and said, hey, any chance you could take the one that came in, match it with the three that came in months ago, a month or so more ago, and send that out and then compare, match the other ones? He said, sure. So he sent it to me. This is Impelitary's answer to the master. This is the one, two, third album by Impelitary, but fourth release. They had an EP with Rob Rock on vocals. Then they had an album, Stand In Line, with Graham Bonnet on vocals. Then they had an album, Grin and Barrett, which is only available like in Japan, Korea, whatever, 
with Rob Rock on vocals, and then this album, Answer to the Master. Now, uh, most all of his albums are, are only really available overseas, and so now they're starting to reissue these on CD and vinyl in the U.S., finally. And this is the first one to hit on vinyl. I hope they go back and do Grin and Barrett. I'm assuming they're going to do them all. This is, in my opinion, where the band really found themselves. Grin and Barrett's a great album. Stand in Line is totally different. The EP, you know, is what it is. It's good. It's a good album, but it's an EP. The Grand Bonnet album is good, but it's nothing like when you get to this. It is like they found the sound, the tone. And to me, this is just like almost melodic perfection. And the album that follows this is probably, to me, the high water mark, one of my favorite albums, Screaming Symphony. This is where it started, though. This was one of the, I bought this one and the other album uh, around the same time, and they just both are so great. It's just, I don't even, I can't, you got to check it out. It's one of just the best sounding, the, the riffs, the music, the vocals. Everything about this album to me is just sweet. So this end. Now the other one, it, the other reissue, like I say, it's going to come in later. And I picked up a couple others that will come with that. Those are due out in May. But I'm glad to see this. And I'm hoping, I picked up, I, didn't, I showed it. One of the other vinyl reissues was the one that I showed a couple videos ago. And that's a much later year. So it's kind of weird. They're, they're not putting them out in order. They're just kind of putting them out uh, in different different order. So. But that's it. Just some great stuff. Pre-orders took a couple months. I'm not aware. I'm not worried too much about waiting uh, because the prices are right for a lot of these imports, and that's the same place I get most all of my high roller record stuff. Uh, Night of the Vinyl Dead, uh, just all kinds of stuff that come out that are harder to find in the U.S. I can get from Met Miami Metal Merchant. Check them out, and I'll be back. Rock on, and rock hard. <laughs>